Twilight Zone. special Halloween episode, the Halloween Spooktacular. Now, instead of doing like any one movie or any one TV show, I decided to do my favorite, the horror and sci-fi horror anthology series. Everyone that I care for. These are my favorite things to watch around Halloween instead of any movie. So I figured it'd be best to show why I like them and some of my favorite episodes from them. First up is The Twilight Zone. The Twilight Zone is probably my favorite show ever. Just the writing and storytelling and the acting is good. Now, not all of it's going to be good. That's what you get when you have a show that ran as long as it did. But there, there are some great episodes. Rod Serling does stupendous with this. If you don't know him by The Twilight Zone, he's also the one who wrote the ending for Planet of the Apes. So he knows how to get a good twist ending. They had some really, really good episodes. It's hard to list my favorite because I just like a majority of them, but some of them you just know by the twist alone. And you know, some of them are horror, some of them are just plain sci-fi, but then you have the good-natured one, like a Night of the Meek where a homeless man finds the toy sack of Santa. And instead of like using it for monetary gain or anything, he just decides that he's gonna hand it out to people. He's going to be Santa. And it's just a good, like, good-hearted episode. I normally don't like things in black and white, but the Twilight Zone pulls it off. In fact, I actually think it helps the atmosphere and just the story in general of all the episodes, it being black and white. One of my favorites is Eye of the Beholder. You go throughout the episode, this woman has just been in a horrible accident and has been disfigured. But they were able to repair her face, though it's not going to be the same as it once was. They describe it as monstrous. And all throughout the episode, the nurse staff and the doctors are all surrounded in shadows, so you don't know what they look like either. And at the very end of the episode, you see that she looks like a normal human now, while all the doctors and nurse staff are horrible, disfigured, almost pig-like people. Twilight Zone original one went off of air and enough people liked it that they decided to bring it back in the 80s. You had Steven Spielberg, Wes Craven, J. Michael Straczynski, and just a whole plethora of people who would make a great Twilight Zone. It wasn't as great as the original, but I still commend their effort. It had so-so episodes, though if I had to pick the best episode, it's called Dealer's Choice. And this episode you have probably like the weirdest Twilight Zone episode because Morgan Freeman's in it. And I love that he's in it because it's just like the simplest premise ever. A bunch of friends get together to play poker and one of them is the devil. And the devil is playing poker against one of them for one of their souls for $19. And the entire time it's just the friend in uprage about the devil. Like there's some really good lines that I like in there. It's like we know you're the devil, but you don't have to be such a jerk about it. Next up, since the 1980s went off air, they had one in the 2000s. This is the weakest of the three. It's not terrible, but it's still good. Uh, they had the best narrator ever. They got Forrest Whitaker to do it. And I just love seeing him. It's nice to see and hear him. Like, he starts off every episode, and I'm like, yeah, there's Forrest Whitaker. Now, their episodes are so-so for the most part. They did have one really good episode, it was called Placebo, and this really paranoid man came in saying that aliens were going to attack Earth, and that he knew for certain. And all the nurses were trying to calm him down, but then aliens actually do invade. And then they find out that this man is, like, for some reason, if this man believes hard enough, that thing will actually happen. So they get him calmed down from that, but then he gets scared about a disease that was going around that he heard of. So everyone in this hospital gets that disease, and they try to stave off this disease, but they can't cure it. So they try to convince the man that this disease is not real, but he already has it in his head. So they make up some thing that the earth got colder, and that killed off the disease, and he believes that. 
Then his mind goes deeper into worry, and the earth freezes over. Overall, The Twilight Zone is just a great show if you want that mix of suspense and horror, and most of the time, pretty good twists. It might be a little old-fashioned, but that never hurt. The Outer Limits. There is nothing wrong with your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. We are controlling transmission. If we wish to make it louder, we will bring up the volume. If we wish to make it softer, we will tune it to a whisper. We will control the horizontal. We will control the vertical. We can roll the image, make it flutter. We can change the focus to a soft blur or sharpen it to crystal clarity. For the next hour, sit quietly and we will control all that you see and hear. We repeat, there is nothing wrong with your television set. You are about to participate in a great adventure. You are about to experience the awe and mystery which reaches from the inner mind to the outer limits. Now, I gotta say, I didn't watch most of the original series in black and white because I just at first saw it as an inferior version of The Twilight Zone. Like, why watch this when The Twilight Zone exists? It's not terrible, it's just I prefer The Twilight Zone. But they do have one heck of an intro. The Outer Limits is a mixed bag. Uh, instead of preferring, like, just twists, they prefer to have just more longer, intricate stories. They do have twists, but The Outer Limits just has to do with aliens. If they loved one thing, it was just having aliens. Like, that aliens were their bread and butter. And I didn't really have a problem with that, it's just that I'd like to see something else besides aliens. They did have other episodes, like you had clones and nanobots, but they really liked aliens. It was okay, it's just Outer Limits is not my kind of bread and butter. It's good at some points, but I prefer the Twilight Zone. The Night Gallery. just see this as just the Twilight Zone. But in the Twilight Zone it was more about teaching you a lesson or just more of suspense. Night Gallery was just pure horror. Which I think worked well. Now the third season had shortened episodes and just wasn't as good, but the first two seasons were just spectacular. One of my favorite episodes is uh, this woman is just the vain and just worst woman ever. She's rich and she's been blind most of her life. Now it wasn't really because of her blindness that she's rude, it's just she's just that rude. And so she gets this experimental surgery. She gets someone else's eyes. Someone donates their eyes so that she can see. And she gets them but then after a while she just can't see. She sees nothing. And the eyes would only last a certain amount of hours, so she's just here, blind again. And she thinks that the eyes didn't work, but the irony is that the eyes did work, and that there was just a blackout the entire time. The Night Gallery takes a different approach. It shows each episode off by a painting and then goes into it. This is a neat way of introducing it, and it's in color, unlike the Twilight Zone. It works for this, but it wasn't really necessary, though I do appreciate it. And Rod Serling also did this series, which is just fantastic. A lot of it was psychological horror, though they did also have actual horror. Tales from the Crypt.
and the cream. I'm not even going to attempt to redo that voice because I'm pretty sure my lungs or my vocal cords just explode. This is a really good series. It's more like it's the most R-rated series out of these. Uh, basically, before it was a TV show on HBO, Tales from the Crypt was a comic book line from EC Comics. EC Comics in their Tales from the Crypt series and Vault of Horror and Tales of Fright and all that were the reason we got a Comics Code Authority. So the next best step was to turn it into a TV show. And it's really, really good. Like, just the style of it and the direction and the just corny narrator, it all just comes together into a really just well put together show. Uh, the twists sometimes are more comedic or more horror. Or sometimes it's just a straight up horror. Like they have one that's just a slasher movie with an evil Santa Claus. It's just an insane uh, psychopath who's dressed as Santa just murdering a woman who just murdered her husband. There's like lots of ironic twists. Uh, they have Joe Pesci. Uh, for those of you who don't know, he was the second criminal from Home Alone. He was in an episode where he plays a guy who finds a set of twins. And he's really sleazy, so he tells them that he's a twin. And so he pretends to be his own twin to these two ladies. But then it turned they, when they find out, because he married them both, they find out, they decide that they're going to have him one way or another, and they cut him in half. They had an hour-long episode, or at least like two hours. It's just a war drama. Like, there's no twist, there's no other thing. It's just a war drama about a commander dad and his son who fled from a war. And they're played by a real-life dad and son. So their dynamic is really good. Dan Aykroyd's in it, but he's not like a comedic character. He's like, they're in World War I. And it's just really good drama with like no twist or any horror. Like there's nothing supernatural in it. They were definitely inventive on this show. <laughs> Tales from the Dark Side. Tales from the Dark Side is half and a half. It's try. It almost tries to be like Tales from the Crypt, hence the name. And it falls short. It just doesn't have the style or flair. It's not horrible. It's just not as quite there as Tales from the Crypt was. There's some good episodes, but they're mainly just uneven at best. Like you have one episode where this guy just has a weird mutant creature daughter thing that he keeps in his house that kills a random guest. And the puppetry is good, but you don't really get much out of it besides that. I forget her real name, but the lead singer and creator of the band Blondie got her first start in this, which it's just nice to see her. I love her music, so it's just nice to see her, even though I'm pretty sure she dies horribly in a few of the episodes. Viewer beware, you're in for a scare. Goosebumps.
based on the popular Arl Stein books and Canadian produced. Goosebumps is just a corny show, but it's mostly an enjoyable corny. Like, yes, the episodes are just horrible, but you have fun with them. You know they're bad. Uh, if you want to see some of our thoughts on the episodes, we did that on The Joe Show. Plug. Go to josephmaldonado.com. And listen yeah. to our episode all about Goosebumps. It's pretty good. Though I just, I think it being made in the 90s and also it being Canadian helped the cheesiness and likability. It was pretty great. Uh, they're all based on R.L. Stein books. They didn't really make up anything and they follow most of the plot of them, though they condense it down instead of being a full-length book into a 20-minute episode on TV. I've watched every episode of the show. They're not really scary, but, you, you know, they tried. Not to be scary, but just enjoyable for kids. Some of them, you know, you can see the twist coming my way now, but when you were a kid it was enjoyable. Like, they have one episode where these kids get to try out this exclusive new roller coaster ride. And then there just starts to be problems. They see things. Uh, one, one of the kids is having, like, weird spasms. And then it turns out that they're both robots that are use that the main guy's using to test this ride. So like as a kid, that's pretty scary. But now you know it's not as good. But you can I think you can enjoy it for the corniness. R.L. Stein's The Haunting Hour. Unlike Goosebumps, I will say that this does have some scary episodes. I think it's just because it's meant for an older audience. Like they have one episode that one episode that I think will always stick in my mind uh, about this ice cream truck that comes and it delivers the most delicious ice cream ever. Like it is just so good. And this one kid finds it and it delivers some ice cream to him, but no one in town will believe him. They just say, "Oh yeah, we've heard kids say that before, but." Most of them just stop talking about it or disappear. But he is adamant to go and find this ice cream truck again. And he eventually does. And as soon as he finds it, this old man just pops out of the back and says he's free now and shoves the other kid inside there. Apparently this ice cream truck feeds off your soul. And that guy has been in there since he was a boy and he's like 40 or 50. Yes, you get delicious ice cream, but the truck, the ice cream truck literally feeds off your soul. And they have this actually genuinely, like two of them, I would say are actually creepy, no matter if you're a kid that the show's intended for, or just a normal person. One of them is, this kid is homesick from the day. And he keeps like seeing weird things, and there's like lots of weird people in hazmat suits around his house. And then this thing comes over the radio, or he's watching the news, and then the news people start to talk to him, saying that he's got to stay focused and stay awake. Don't go into the dream. Because there's this weird alien creature going around his house. And this kid is like having a crisis because he sees what's happening on the TV telling him not to believe it. But then, also, he's getting... He can't decide which is reality and which is fiction. And then... He thinks he's defeated the monster and everything seems alright and his mom comes home asking him what happened and he's just embracing his mom while the two reporters are telling him don't live into the dream. This kid died. Like, this monster probably ate him. Like, this psychic weird brain monster just probably killed him and is still on the run. And last but not least, are you afraid of the dark? which is like the slightly edgier counterpart to Goosebumps. 
their episodes weren't that scary, and I would dare say that the acting is probably worse than theirs, but they did have, like, more sense that they knew what they were doing. Every episode would start with the Midnight Society, a bunch of Canadian kids in denim that would sit around and each tell a spooky story. And that's how you would get your episodes. They have one about if you go swimming after dark, this zombie corpse drags you under and kills you. And that's just it. Like, no real moral or anything. Just don't go swimming after dark or this zombie corpse will drown you. I have to say my favorite episode that I saw was their movie theater episode. Maybe it's because I just work at the movies, but these two kids work at a failing uh, movie theater. And this weird guy, which I can, I've heard described as Canadian Hagrid, who is a recurring character on the show called Dr. Vink, comes by. And he's like, if you show my movies, your movie theater will do well. And I only ask that you show my movies on one day. And since the main guy's a jerk, he doesn't honor the deal afterwards. They play his movie, but since this Dr. Vink guy is, like, insane, it turns out that his movie, even though people enjoy it and it gives them business, it also turns out that his movie is real. It's a vampire movie about Nosferatu. And Nosferatu can actually come out of the movie and kill people. And so the main kid has to fight him. And then at the end, Dr. Vink just buys the movie theater, and he will play his internal, his eternal, like, living hell movies forever. So these kids have to deal with it over and over again. It is really goofy, but it's not quite as goofy as Goosebumps. Yeah, I'd say it's pretty solid. Well, I think we've all had fun here. And if I have to say one thing, and you have to all watch these no matter what. I don't care which one you pick. Horror anthologies are always the best to watch at Halloween. And speaking of Halloween, I hope you have a haunted Halloween. <laughs> Happy Halloween! He did the monster match. The monster match. It was a graveyard smash. He did the match. It caught on in a flash. He did